YouTuber, viral fitness personality, animal rights activist, and mass shooter. Jeff, there's still a huge law enforcement presence here at YouTube headquarters. Where we've seen armed officers streaming into the building and hundreds of employees coming up. Now, this terrifying day at YouTube began with witnesses reporting hearing some 20 gunshots, and then a, uh, there was a stream of calls to 911. At 12.46 p.m. this afternoon, San Bruno Police Department received numerous 911 calls regarding gunshots at the YouTube campus located on Cherry Avenue in our city. Uh, San Bruno Police arrived on scene at 12.48 and, uh, at, uh, and immediately began a search uh, for a possible shooter or suspect. Um, upon arrival, officers encountered numerous employees fleeing from the building. Uh, it was very chaotic, as you can imagine. Um, we did encounter one victim with apparent gunshot wound uh, towards the front of the business as we arrived. Uh, several minutes later, while conducting a search of the premises, uh, officers located a second uh, individual with a gunshot wound that appears to uh, may have been self-inflicted. We are still working on confirming that. Many singers like Nicki Minaj, Miley, and many others have sensual scenes so inappropriate for children to watch. Don't get age restricted, but my videos, my workout video gets age restricted. This is what they are doing to vegan activists and many other people who try to promote healthy, humane, and smart living. At around midday on the 3rd of April 2018, 38-year-old Nassim Agdam would walk into YouTube's headquarters located in San Bruno, California. She wasn't looking for a job, however. She was there to shoot the place up. Armed with the Smith & Wesson 9mm semi-automatic pistol, she opened fire on multiple employees, resulting in three of them going on to be injured, one critically, before turning the gun on herself and taking her own life. Anger, disappointment, but more importantly, censored is what Nassim felt towards YouTube and their policies on the site. Other content creators have had their fair share of issues with the company in the past, but ultimately it is down to YouTube to keep the site fair and safe for all users. Something that Nassim didn't seem to quite get, and something she definitely did not like. So recently, they also attacked my Persian channel, Nassim Saps. And if you go and check my videos, you see that my new videos hardly get views, and my old videos that used to get many views, I stopped getting views. So this is because I'm being filtered. And another thing, they age restricted my ab workout video. Situated roughly 1,300 meters above sea level, located along the Shahar River on the Ermia Plain, is a large city by the name of Ermia in Iran. A city rife with culture and famously known for its salt lake, Ermia Lake, it would be home to roughly 200,000 people as of 2012. Immigration between both Iran and its neighbouring country, Azerbaijan, can be found all the way back to the 1850s, with many Iranians opting to become migrant workers and seek opportunities in the Russian Empire. In the years that followed, though, people from both countries would immigrate to either side of the border for their various reasons. Around this time, the Baha'i faith was on the rise within the regions, a movement that teaches its followers to try to achieve world peace through the establishment of unity, justice and equality. There's multiple spiritual teachings that they do follow, but you'll have to take a Google search if you want to find out more. The Agdam family had both immigrated from Azerbaijan to Iran and they practiced the Baha'i faith, but not much is known about them other than they were a pretty average family. A father, mother, brother, grandparents, and on the 5th of April 1980, the latest addition to the family, Nassim. Again, there isn't much information out there depicting the early life of the family or that of Nassim, but all we do know for sure is that from young, Nassim was a vegetarian, loved animals, and a father had this to say about her. 
As a youngster, she wouldn't even kill ants in the family home. Instead, she used paper to move them out of the backyard. It's also thought that in her early years, she worked for her father at his electrical company, but not much is detailed about her time there. In 1996, at the age of 16, Nassim and her family would immigrate once again, this time to San Diego in the United States of America. Upon arriving, Nassim was said to have developed a passion for animal rights. She's pictured here in 2009, dressed in a wig and jeans, with drops of blood painted on them while brandishing a plastic sword. This demonstration took place outside of Camp Pendleton Marine Corps Base near San Diego, to demonstrate against the use of pigs in military trauma training. When animal rights group PETA were later reached for comment in 2018 about Nassim's time with them, they were quoted as saying this. She appeared at a few demonstrations about nine years ago, but changed her phone number and dropped out of sight. Nassim would establish a charity called Peace Thunder Inc. A quick internet search doesn't bring any relevant pages up though, and the only other early life information that's out there about Nassim whilst in America is that on the 13th of September 2001, she passed her student pilot course and received a certificate for that course. But she never loved, never married, never had children, and from what people have said about her, it doesn't seem like she was all that bothered about starting a family of her own. Maybe, just maybe then, that could have been because YouTube was her love, YouTube was her partner, and YouTube was her child. The earliest documented time that we can find of Nassim on YouTube is in 2014. You see, her social medias have since been deleted, but back then she did gain around 8,500 subscribers in 2014, which isn't too bad on the grand scheme of things. She had gained the subs mainly from people back in her home country of Iran, and this was because not many Iranian women were on YouTube doing the kind of thing that she was doing, and that's why she became viral at doing it. She had multiple YouTube channels all covering similar topics, veganism, bodybuilding, healthy eating, hand drawing, and making music from time to time. She had been a rising influencer across a few social platforms, 12k subscribers at her peak on YouTube, and over 54,000 Instagram followers at her peak. But good times would start to come to an end like it did for a lot of small creators on YouTube back in August of 2016, where something drastic was about to happen on the platform, and the term connected to this situation, even until this very day, shakes every YouTuber to their core. Stop, you beautiful bastards. Hope you're having a fantastic Thursday. Welcome back to the Philip DeFranco Show, and let's just jump into it. And the first thing I'll briefly address, a lot of people have been asking me to recover the YouTube monetization story because there have been a lot of updates. I reported on Monday, YouTube had put into place their broader ad policies. A ton of people all of a sudden had a lot of videos that had their ads removed. They were demonetized. Many people not receiving any email whatsoever. No notification, although there was a minority saying that they are getting them now. The story slowly got bigger and bigger as people actually realized, oh crap, my videos are being demonetized too. Massive creators like Jenna Marble, H3H3 production saying not only were their videos being demonetized, ads pulled off of videos that had millions of views already, they weren't able to appeal. That is, question the choice of YouTube's automatic system. YouTube then responded, thanks for the reports, we've identified a bug that is preventing the appeal of some demonetized videos. We're working on a fix ASAP. And so then I wanted to double check if I had any more videos demonetized. There are so many. I went through and I have three pages of demonetized videos or videos I have to submit appeals on where I, it's often where I'm just talking about hate groups and with the disgusting things they had to do and the outcry against them. In in August of 2016, YouTube would dramatically start to shift their focus towards more family-friendly content on the platform, which would mean that a lot of creators with a more mature audience, or who were, say, quote, edgy in nature, would start to see their channels affected and ultimately they'd be getting paid nothing for their hard work. Now, they would be getting paid something, but compared to how it used to be, this is nothing. The term adpocalypse was coined to fit the situation. In other words, adverts were being placed 
on more family-friendly content following some backlash YouTube had been receiving over specific types of content and adverts that were being played on that type of content. Some huge creators with even the likes of PewDiePie would see their videos get demonetized or in other words get extremely small percentages of the ad revenue that they would usually get from an upload. It wasn't just the money being made from videos though, it was actually channel traffic in general. This was affecting a lot of creators on the platform and a lot were voicing their opinions on what was going on. And they were also commenting on what was going to be happening moving forward, but ultimately no one really knew what was going to be happening next. And just as this was happening, PewDiePie was about to make this situation 10 times worse than it already was. Fast forward to February of 2017 and with all the confusion going on and creators in turmoil, PewDiePie, the most subscribed YouTuber at the time, came under fire for posting videos that YouTube deemed anti-Semitic and hate speech. I won't be diving into the nature of those videos here though, but I'm sure a lot of you would have heard about them before. At the same time, other racist and extremist content had been surfacing, which led to the UK government, Coca-Cola, Dr Pepper, Johnson & Johnson and many other major brands pulling or pausing advertisement on YouTube as they didn't want their brand to be shown or connected in any type of way to specific types of content on the platform. And from here... It was a downhill slope. Rewinding slightly to October of 2016, and it seems as if Nassim had been one of those channels affected by the August 2016 algorithm change. On her website, she shared screenshots comparing stats from January 2016 and October 2016, showing a clear drop in the latter. She had also vented her frustration at the fact that she only earned 10 cents from a video that had surpassed 300,000 views. But we can assume that Nassim didn't know that various different types of content creators were being affected after she thought it was just vegan and animal rights YouTubers that had been hit by the adpocalypse. You see, she thought YouTube had an agenda against her to silence her for her views on animal rights and veganism. On her website, this is what she had to say about YouTube back in October of 2016. The very first Persian vegan TV commercial and vegan music video was created by Nassim and launched through international Persian satellite television, Andisha TV, for the first time in April 2010. I also had different TV shows on different Iranian TVs. Be aware, dictatorships exist in all countries, but with different tactics. They only care for personal short-term profits and do anything to reach their goals, even by fooling simple-minded people, hiding the truth, manipulating science and everything, putting public mental and physical health at risk, abusing non-human animals, polluting environment, destroying family values, promoting materialism, sexual degeneration in the name of freedom and turning people into robots. There's no free speech in the real world and you'll be suppressed for telling the truth that is not supported by the system. Videos of targeted users are filtered and merely regulated so that people can hardly see their videos. There is no equal growth opportunity on YouTube or any other video sharing site. Your channel will grow if they want it to. The following month in November would see Nassim's paranoid thoughts come to life as she she thought she was now being attacked in person by a higher entity, attacking her for her views on veganism. Here on her website she posted a picture of her car tyre which had some sort of screw in it and talking of this she said, my car attacked by anti-vegan animal business supporting criminals trying to harm and kill me because of animal rights awakening stickers on my car, America USA. But as the months went on, her paranoia that YouTube was coming for her would continue. The video you seen towards the start of this story was recorded in January of 2017. Again, she was talking about being targeted by YouTube. The following month, as the adpocalypse was in full effect, Nassim took to the streets of California to protest for what she believed was YouTube censoring her. And then in June of 2017, with absolutely nothing changing for her, it appears that Nassim communicated 
communicated with YouTube continuing her rhetoric that YouTube was specifically targeting her after she had started to upload her vegan videos in Turkish. Of course, on the surface level, we now have an understanding that a lot of creators were being affected, but when it showed, quote, an error occurred on her own website, this theory that YouTube and Google were plotting against her played into her head even more than it should have done. Talking of this, she said, when searching for my website in Google, at the top of the link, they add an error occurred, but there is no error. They add it to keep you from visiting my site and therefore exposure to facts. The corrupt system hides from you and fools simple-minded people with lies to make more money from the animal business, promotion of immorality, materialism, and sexual degeneration. Once again, asking why some videos are granted millions of views, but others of similar content are not. Later explaining that videos such as Nicki Minaj Anaconda Live seen millions of views, but her work received very little. By the end of 2017, and with more advertisers now pulling out over the Elsa Gate controversy, YouTube once again would start to come down hard on content creators, starting the second wave of the adpocalypse. Only a few months later, at the start of 2018, Logan Paul's infamous Japan Forest vlog would come out, and you know how that story goes. Nisim's anger towards YouTube wasn't some well-kept secret though, as you know. Her family knew of her YouTube channel and they didn't just find out through the videos, Nisim reportedly would tell them of her issues with the company. So when she disappeared from her home address on the 31st of March 2018 and hadn't answered calls for the following two days, her father decided to call the police to tell them that she had gone missing. He explained that she might be heading towards YouTube because she hated the company after what she thought they had done to her, but didn't say she was a direct threat to anyone. On the 2nd of April 2018, after being missing for a little while at this point, the police would stumble across Nassim in a car park where she'd been sleeping in her car. 5L32, Melvia. 5L32. The plate you just ran comes back associated to a missing person out of San Diego. What's your 20? I'm in the Walmart parking lot. Can you just confirm the plate? Hey, firm. It's going to be five zebra Charles X ray, four six nine. It's on a white Pontiac. Ten or eight, firm. So it's going to be a match. It should be a 2006 Pontiac, uh, two door, and it's associated. Uh, stand by one. Stand by, stand by, I have to pull up the mud pit. 10 4. Oh, Jesus. I don't know what's going on. Hey, that's what happens on this team when there's nah. nothing going on. Well, I mean, I saw him. I didn't see you. You was here. See, her head's right here. Hey, please. Hello. Hi, are you in a scene? Yeah. Hey, so you reported as missing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as missing oh. from San Diego? Yeah, I left my family. Okay. okay. So you don't live with them anymore? No. Okay. Can I, can I just ask if you don't mind why you left? We don't get the line together, so I left them. Okay. Do you have ID on you by chance? So did you just decide to move or?
Were you just not getting along with your family? Yeah, I'm, uh, with my brother. With your brother? I know, but you need my father. Oh, with your father. How long have you been here in Mountain View? I left home. Uh, I came here two days ago. So oh, wow. Okay. Now. Okay. I guess you've never done that before, huh? No. Okay, so your family was worried about you. Okay. I guess they called San Diego Police Department and reported you missing. Yeah, I didn't tell them anything. Okay. Oh, you didn't tell your parents or, any, or family or anything? Did you tell anybody where you went? Huh? Did you tell anybody where you went? No, not yet. I Okay. Have they tried calling you? No, I don't have a phone. Oh, you don't have a phone? Or you didn't I, answer? I don't have anything. But did they try calling you? My main phone that I used to, like, it called to them. Okay. So oh, okay. Do you have a phone on you at all? Right now, yeah, right now I have a phone. Do you have a phone? Oh, okay. okay. Do you mind if do you mind if I have it? I won't give it to them. I don't know I don't know the number. You can probably find it on your phone. Are you taking any type of medication at all? No. Are you supposed to take medication? No. Okay. okay. You don't want to hurt yourself, do you? Oh, you don't want to hurt anybody else? You don't want to commit suicide or anything like that, right? Okay. Hmm. Are you ever planning on going back home? No? <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. Do you have any friends or anybody out here? No? So where did you go on your from San Diego? It didn't take you a, a month to get here, did it? No. Did it take? It didn't take you a month to get here, did it? No, I left yesterday morning and at night I was here. Oh, okay. So you left yesterday. Oh, just two days ago. Yeah, I, for some reason I thought it was. Oh, you're right. Okay, March 31st. Okay, yeah, you're right. March 31st. Okay. Okay. And then you just drove straight here. Why Mountain View? I mean, I know it's a great city and everything, but. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Okay. Something new. Start fresh. Okay. okay. Ah, very good. Okay, fair enough. Go into so. I was just trying to get the password. Oh, you're trying to get your password. Okay. So if you go into your settings, or you're going to your phone, where your phone is at, right? Go all the way back. Go all the way back to your, and go to your phone here, and it should say, can I see it, is that okay? Oh, this is a drawer Android, right, so that's why I don't know how to, how to work it. Oh, yeah. Do you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but the, the thing is, is that we sometimes get people that park their stolen vehicles here, and so we run all the plates that are out in the parking lot. And when he ran the plate, it came back to you, but it came back as a missing person. 
At least in, in an iPhone, it's usually in the phone. Yep. I might just call my own number, I guess. Because for Android, usually it's within the settings under. Go back. Hit phone. Hit 411 and more. Never mind. Do you have a Siri test? Test here. Like a Siri type thing? A Siri type? No. No, no, it says Android doesn't have Siri. Yeah. But it has Google, Google button. Assistant? <clears throat> Hold the home button. Hold the home button to see if it's not. What's my phone number? Nah, uh, I don't want to. I just call my work, though. That's fine. That'll work. So all we're gonna do, we just had to make sure that you were okay. So we're gonna, we have to call your dad. We're just gonna let him know that you're fine and you wish not to be contacted. And we check your well. Well, we have to tell him. We have to say, we have to tell him that we found you. Right? Um, but, I mean, legally we have to do that. We have to say, well, we found her. Um, she is fine. She left home because she doesn't want to be there anymore. And <clears throat> she doesn't want to be contacted. And that's all we tell them. Okay? And then if you choose to contact your family, you can. But <clears throat> what we'll do is we'll take your name and the, and the car out of the system so you won't be reported missing anymore. Okay? Is there anything you want us to tell your parents? Okay. Okay. Alrighty. <laughs> You're welcome. The police would later describe this interaction as calm and cooperative, adding at no point during the 20 minute interaction did she mention anything about YouTube. Little did they know though that only one day later she was about to attempt to cause multiple casualties right at the heart of the company. Later that day on the 2nd, what isn't widely known is that Nassim actually went to YouTube headquarters to ask for a job initially. On that day, she was spotted asking employees for directions to the main office, before being directed to the front desk where she inquired about employment. We're unsure what exactly happened next, or whether she genuinely approached YouTube for a job, or was just simply scoping the place out, but she left, and later that night, she slept in a car park, again in her car, roughly three miles away from the headquarters in Mountain View. The next morning, she went to a local gun range to test her aim out with a Smith & Wesson handgun that she'd bought in January of 2018, before driving to YouTube, parking her car in a garage, and walking to a door leading to the courtyard. Employees had reportedly asked for identification, to which she ignored, and moments later, she opened fire on multiple people. Gunfire and terror at YouTube headquarters in California. New information still is coming in, but we now know the shooter was a woman. Police say she's dead, and multiple people are wounded. The suspect's motive, still unclear. I'll talk about that story much more with Democratic Senator Richard Blumenthal, and our correspondents and analysts are all standing by. Uh, let's get first to our national correspondent, Miguel Marquez, who's tracking the late-breaking developments for us on this YouTube shooting. What are you learning, Miguel? Well, it was in the lunch hour when the shots started and the 911 call started to go into the San Bruno police. It was a cafeteria area, an outdoor patio area where that shooting began. And within minutes, there was a massive police uh, presence on scene as well as emergency services. It, then it was a, a bit of chaos with very heavily armed police moving into the YouTube headquarters. Uh, over a thousand employees there. That thousand employees were trying to get out of the YouTube headquarters at the same time. Uh, within an hour or so, they had set up triage areas. The law enforcement uh, pace seemed to have lessened just a bit. Here is what the San Bruno police uh, chief, how has he described the timeline? Around 10 shots had been fired, emptying one magazine before reloading and emptying another one. Three employees had been shot but would all thankfully go on to recover. For Nassim, however, according to the coroner's report, she shot herself in the heart 
and she died at the scene. No drugs or alcohol were found in her system that day and she had no reported mental health issues. This to me just seems like a case of her thinking that YouTube had some sort of agenda against her. If you hadn't had the knowledge that YouTube's algorithm was changing which affected a lot of creators, some people's reaction might have been the same as hers in the sense that you might have felt that there was some sort of censoring against you for your views. What we can take away from this situation though is that thankfully no innocent people were killed that day because this situation could definitely have been added to the list of America's worst mass shootings.